So what we have is uh, Divi, the Divi project, which is a proof of stake blockchain secured by masternodes. We launched our blockchain and desktop wallet in September of 2018, and we created the first one-click masternodes. Um, so you're actually able to deploy a masternode, which is generally a really difficult, intensive process at the click of a button for a, a low monthly fee. But masternodes are really just a way of building our network, and we've actually seen this 15% per week growth recently uh, in our masternode network to the point where now 56% of our coin economy is actually allocated to masternodes, creating a really secure and distributed network. But as I said, masternodes are really just a starting point and a proof of concept to show that we can make crypto much more easy and accessible to the average person or the non-technical user. We do this by creating a user experience focus uh, and a hybrid approach to crypto and fiat because we find that the value chain of, of cryptocurrency is extremely fragmented. I'm sure everyone has experienced at one time or another sort of the, the, the friction that is involved with in onboarding yourself to crypto. I love using Tesla as the case study because they saw how fragmented the automotive industry is and they actually took the entire value chain and vertically integrated it. So they're actually designing, manufacturing, selling and providing the fuel for the cars and they've completely changed the way that we buy and think about buying cars. So as we understand our value chain, you know, we have a lot of friction. You're starting with Coinbase potentially, and then each step of the process, even each step of the process at Coinbase, which is like a 20 step process, loses a subset of users each step of the way. It doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere. And then you have to go to all these other services to continue to transact and use your, your crypto. It's not enough value. And that's what we need to provide in order to uh, garner a massive adoption of cryptocurrency. We take this approach of integrating the value chain just like Tesla does. We take a focus on user experience, not user interface, but user experience. We take away the confusing, unintuitive, and the user interfaces that lack detail and standardization, such as those. And you can see this is our app that's really understandable, familiar, and detail-oriented. In this app, you know, you're, we're taking away things like insane long passwords and long transaction times and the fear of sending cryptocurrency by adding things like usernames that are secured and cryptographically secure on the blockchain, avatars and usernames, or I'm sorry, personal names, you can actually search and send to people just like you would with Venmo or Cash App. But it really doesn't stop at the product, right? We're creating an entire ecosystem of products. Unlike BlackBerry, which failed because they were a single product with no ecosystem, where I, iCloud or Apple succeeds and is a trillion dollar company because they created an ecosystem of products that are interoperable and accessible from anywhere. We're doing the same thing with Divi, where we have, of course, an interoperable desktop and mobile wallet, Lightning Network, Atomic Swaps, Masternodes, ways to earn and easy ways to transact. But it doesn't stop there. We actually went ahead and purchased a remittances company in Costa Rica so that we're not just partnered with a bank, we own, it's not quite a bank, but a financial services company. This creates a symbiotic relationship that actually allows us to pass KYC and AML data privately in the background so that the user can actually go into a store, which we have two physical locations in Costa Rica, 300 yards away from Western Union locations, you can go in, do the transaction that they would normally do, which is sending money back home to Nicaragua or wherever they're sending it to, and they're offered to lower those fees on something that they need to do consistently with cryptocurrency. Now we're able to onboard customers into cryptocurrency without them needing to know what an exchange is or really what blockchain is at all. Then they can manage their money on a very convenient mobile app, spend their money with debit cards, which we can issue from our own entity, exchange their assets either peer-to-peer -peer or custodial in the typical way that you would between USD, not USDC or USDT, but actual fiat, uh, Bitcoin, and of course we'll add more wallet or more coins in the very, very near future. Additionally, we can issue international bank account numbers. As long as the user has an ID and a phone number, they can get a bank account with a threshold of up to $1,500 per month, which is perfect for anyone in the developing world underbanked, unbanked. 10 seconds. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you a couple more pictures of, of our asset storage wallet. And uh, 
and let you ask me some questions. I'm going to show you pictures of puppies and bacon and stuff. I'm going to start at this end this time. One of the ladies first, Rachel. Thanks. <laughs> I think that you really put a lot of focus on the user experience here and making it easy, which is wonderful because I'd love, you know, one day for my mother to be able to use a solution like this. Talk about those features and how it's unique. Yeah, the unique features. Right. So you know what we see a lot in in the onboarding process of a lot of the wallets that are out there today is when you get on, they're instantly showing you like. Set up your seed phrase, write this down. If you lose it, you're done. You, all your money's gone. We don't take that approach. We actually integrate our marketing into our onboarding process. So let's say you actually clicked on an ad that said, set up a bank account today. You're not gonna see the seed phrase thing at all. You're just gonna onboard the normal way, get your bank account, and then you're introduced to new services once you're in the wallet. Um, so at, playing to your, your user experience focus, every user's experience is completely customized to that person. Do you have any plans to integrate with like major credit card companies? Credit cards um, are, are of course a, a long-term goal, but we do have relationships with Visa and MasterCard that we'll be able to issue uh, debit cards here in the very, very near future before awesome. the East. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the presentation, really enjoyed it. Um, you said that you've seen, was it 15% per month growth here recently? Per week. Per week growth, okay. Um, is that attributable to the recent news with regard to the bank, do you think? I believe that that is a big reason for it. Um, and the fact that you know we've been around for over a year now, we survived, actually thrived through the bear market, and I think people are beginning to trust the platform. How many users do you have on board at this time? It's hard to say. We don't specifically track each individual user. Um, but what we can say is that we have just reached an all-time high of masternodes deployed. Um, with, with our system, there's tiered masternodes, right? So you have uh, five different levels of entry, all with higher requirement for uh, allocation. Um, we just passed 620, 620 masternodes, which means there's hundreds of millions of coins allocated to those. Um, but it's, again, it's hard to say. If you take our Twitter and, and social media, there's probably tens of thousands. And uh, how much money have you raised today then? What are you looking for uh, at this time? We did an ICO in 2017. Um, we only raised about a million and a half, uh, depending on the time of ETH at the, you know, the price of ETH at the time. Um, and since then, we, we took on a little bit of, of capital to, to buy the bank, or the remittances company, sorry. Um, we're looking for $2 million at a $10 million valuation today, equity only. Great, thanks. Oh, great. <clears throat> um, so the question for behind the thing. For me, it looks like a little bit crossing BitPay with Dash. So you have a master node reward system. And the problem I see in regulation when it comes to, that's a very good problem of Dash, for example, when it comes to evaluation of the master node system. So if you've seen um, BitPay was taken, well by, taken down by a change in the regulations, and the, uh, the reward system is now a little bit crippling down with BitPay, and they lost a lot of customers. So how do you address the regulators when this come? Was the was the volatile of your project going really really fast and exceeding by a node system to overcome the AML? Yes, so um, we're obviously extremely focused on compliance and regulatory um, compliance. <laughs> uh, so we're we're fully um, sorry. We have gotten uh, letters of uh, opinion from two lawyers, one in the U.S. and one in Malta. Uh, so the VFA laws. Um, so we can. Clarify that we're not a security. Um, we're a distributed decentralized network, so we kind of like fit that. Um, as far as the rewards go, we actually um, made another acquisition of a company called FAO, which is really a, an invoicing and uh, reconciliation company. So we can actually go ahead and integrate their services into our wallet to help users track their tax um, implications for each reward and for all of their, their spending and receiving of, of funds. Does that, does that kind of answer what, what you're asking? Yeah. yeah. So uh, you have an interesting project. Uh, you're kind of doing things, or you did things, the opposite of the way most places will do, which is start the equity first and then do the token sale. So you did the token sale, kind of high to the market, the number 17. I was surprised you raised so little. A um, uh, couple questions, though. It says uh, that you raised 2.5 million 
and it was about 80 million tokens at like 62 cents at the time. But yet, on coin market cap now, it says you have 1.3 billion tokens. Did you add a lot, or did you do like a, a, a split or something? Correct. So our token sale was conducted on the Ethereum blockchain with a, an exchange token called, called Divix. Um, what we did was when we transitioned to mainnet, anyone who, if you had one Divix, you got 100 Divi. Uh, so it was a one to 100. And some of the aggregators have mm, spotty information, I'll say. Uh, but if you want to find the exact tokenomics and, and uh, uh, numbers around the raise, you can find it on our wiki, uh, on our website. Okay. Um, I guess the other question is, um, so, when, when, when I look at a company that has an equity offering and also has a, a trading token, I'm always looking for some kind of balance um, so that, you know, there have been a lot of bad examples of bad behavior, bad actors are just unfortunate. Uh, design where all the value that the token holders thought they were going to get went to the private company yeah. or vice versa. Um, how do your tokenomics work where if you get your funding for, I'm presuming it's for the operation of the bank, more or less on the uh, equity side? Um, Not entirely. Okay. How, how does that help when, when you get funded there? That does, how does that help somebody who say is more interested in buying the tokens? So everything that we're doing with the bank is really to influence the utility value of the, of the token, or of the coin, I should say. Um, so the first step is integrating crypto with those in-person retail locations, those brick and mortars, so that when people come in, they can actually save on their, their remittances with crypto. The next step would be you know, micro lending, peer-to-peer -peer lending, and things of that nature, all within the wallet using Divi, again. Anything that can be done on a financial level should be um, integrated with Divi in order to bring down the fees. Our goal is to actually bring most banking fees to near zero. And um, with, with Costa Rica kind of being the nexus, um, are you focusing on your expansion? Uh, I mean, I chatted, having drinks with some of your team, just sort of saying Latin America's not my big, you know, um, need down there, um, or are you looking at uh, global expansion, are you not looking at the U.S., or where, where are you sort of looking at primarily to expand outside of Costa Rica? Sure. Well, you know, as you may have heard, we're expanding to four more locations in Costa Rica. That's our starting point. Of course, we'll, we'll start to expand down uh, through Central and South America. There's obviously the biggest need there. But we've actually had people tell us, oh, we need one of these in, in my town in Colorado where there's a, a transient community of you know, travelers skiing or doing whatever they're doing that needs to send money here and there and back and forth. I had a, I had a conversation last night with a, a soccer player who said, you know, because they're traveling all over the world and getting paid, they're not able to send money back home other than going into these stores and, and sending money home uh, through remittance locations and the fees are killing them. Um, so yeah. Have any, I mean, you're not on any current U.S. exchange or um, So we're on Bitru, which is a Singapore-based exchange, but they have a U.S. operation um, and they're a beautiful exchange, fully insured and um, really just a stand-up so stand community. So U.S. users inside of Bitru? 100%, yes. Okay, great. Thanks. No further questions, Your Honor. Next up at our RBV project. Thank you. Be thinking about your uh, your closer when we bring you back up because you'll have one more chance to wow the judges. Okay, let's. Uh... Next up is the one and only Divi. Divi. Nick Savanaro. Put a minute on the clock. We're good to go. Talk to the judges. Tell them why. So, an investment in Divi is really an investment in. Mass adoption. You know, I, I believe that we have the best solution for mass adoption because of our hybrid approach. We're in the physical world, we're in the digital world. We've sustained and thrived amongst one of the most difficult bear markets of all time since crypto became a thing. Um, you know, that, that resiliency is really important, especially because it's probably not the last bear market we'll see, right? Um, you know, our solution has been heralded as the easiest to use, even though it's the proof of concept version. Uh, and you can see that our, our forthcoming version is even more simplified and familiar to users. Um, that's really what it comes down to. We have real users, we have real revenues. It's a real company. Um, so we just need to accelerate growth a little bit and expand into, uh, into new markets.
All right, second place. Second place, and it was a close one between second and first. Second place is Divi. You took third last year. You're second this year. Moving on up. Boom. Cash money. Oh my gosh. If it's that and, close. And, and, first and, place goes. And, and for the $25,000, we also uh, basically noted that whoever's, uh, sorry, the fund that is uh, uh, Edge 196 um, will be able to make the decision whether they put it into the equity or into the tokens. So it's up to you guys. Very good.